Hey everyone, welcome to the Electric Supercar Channel. Today we're gonna to be doing some electric climate control. Boom, that's gonna be amazing. So basically what that means is we're gonna take a system that was not necessarily meant for electric climate control and substitute it. So that means both like a heater core as well as an <laughs> as well as an AC compressor. We're gonna replace the heater core and this truck actually never had AC. So we're gonna do AC system kind of all from scratch. So we're gonna be doing this for a high voltage system, but it's kind of the exact same thing if you're doing it for a 12 volt system. One of the only differences is that for a 12 volt system, you would need to do something like 100 amps where a 400 volt system, we can get away with like 20 to 30 amps. So we'll end up doing a little recap for you about how the AC system works and how this is gonna be used. Then we'll show you all the steps it takes to get this to work. Let's get to it. I'm not an expert, but I'll kind of try and briefly explain how an AC system works. This whole system operates on a very special substance called refrigerant. The refrigerant, because of its properties, when it goes to a gas state or a liquid state, there's a lot of heat that it can be exchanged. And that's kind of the properties that the system takes advantage of to cool the car. So the compressor is really the workhorse of the system and it receives low pressure gas that it then compresses to be a high pressure gas. That then moves to the condenser, which is kind of like the radiator at the front of the car. So as this high temperature, high pressure gas goes through the condenser, the cool air through the condenser allows that to then become a high pressure liquid. That high pressure liquid then goes through the expansion valve. The expansion valve allows the high pressure liquid to then go to a low pressure liquid, which then goes through the evaporator. So the evaporator is what's inside the car and when the fan blows it, you get lots of cool air in the car. That process though, turns it back into a low pressure gas, at which point it then goes back into the condenser to be cycled again. The heater system is pretty simple. Um, in an internal combustion car, there is a pump that circulates all the coolant from the motor, which is hot. It goes up to the radiator, gets cooled that way. But it also, you can switch a valve and it will go inside the cabin into the heater core and a fan will blow air across that and get warm air in the cabin. Most of this was taken out before, but we still had to have the crash bar taken out. So it's got kind of the dividers to put air up or down, as well as it's got the heater core and the blower. So that is now out. The main unit, again, it's got kind of uh, divider doors and things like that, but this is where the heater core is. So we're gonna take that out. And we've got this one, this is an electric one. It's a pretty tight fit. Gonna make sure I'm lubed up a little bit. There we go. That is an awesome fit. So we're working on a Toyota here. Obviously we've got the whole crash bar and dash removed. We've got the HVAC removed. There's the blower fan and blend door. And we've removed all that because we are adding air conditioning to this project, but this truck did not come with air conditioning. So we're adding it. So what I did was bought kit and this, this intermediate pipe gets replaced with the evaporator core. The evaporator core is very dirty. I've already cleaned it a little bit, but it needs serious cleaning. This was completely clogged. So we clean the evaporator core. This is what it looks like now. It is much, much cleaner. For the AC hoses here to go through, and I've started attaching some hoses here. I drilled these holes in the firewall to get the AC lines through, and I have installed the condenser. Today's sponsor is LastFit, and we have some custom automotive floor liners. The LastFit liners come with a 90 day money back guarantee and lifetime hassle free warranty. You see here, we've got four mats. This comes with driver, passenger, as well as back seat. These are all laser scanned and custom fit to the exact car. All right, so this is the car of choice. It's a 2019 Camaro. The owner of this car is actually a plumber. And so you can understand that, hey, lots of times in that sort of uh, profession, you don't want to necessarily mess up your nice car. So that's where these liners come in. So the new ones are in and basically you can see they line up exactly with these and everywhere. It just fits like a glove. The mats are made from TPE material, which is an eco-friendly material. And I think one of the best things about these, if you do have a dirty day, so you can just take them out, hose them off, and it looks exactly like new when you're done. Again, just such a good fit. All right, so we also have it for the back seat as well. 
And look at that fit. It's just great. So yeah, they really do just transform the car. And it's a great investment to kind of keep everything nice. If you install these, they're gonna protect all your carpets and things and keep the resale value of your car high. These are sturdy and durable. So these are heavy duty and they won't crack or break down with long-term use. This is custom fit to every vehicle. So you can cover every corner. They have deep ridges for maximum protection. And it's 100% edge to edge fit. These are even better than the OEM ones. And this is all weather protection. And it is super easy to clean with a hose, just rinse it off. And for a limited time, there is a coupon code ES20 where you can save 20% off. This is limited time only. If you're looking to upgrade your car with a product like this, I'll leave a link in the video description below. All right, so we've got the heater box installed here. The new PTC heater is in here and it's really close to this plenum, but it fits perfectly in there. Now that's in place, everything looks good. We have access to the plug and controls. Everything fits really nice. And we're even able to get this bolt back here behind the heater in. So uh, next is gonna be the AC. All right, we've got the evaporator core in heater core, boxes and everything hooked up. Now we'll just have to connect the new wiring harness that came with this kit, as well as these AC lines. Make sure all the lines are tight, make sure all the lines on the condenser, and then we can pull the vacuum and fill the refrigerant system once the compressor is hooked up. All right, we got the brackets from Suncut Send to mount the AC compressor and the Toyota. Got these rubber standoff vibration dampers here that I've put in. This one already had a welded nut in the back, so I was able to just thread it right in. And then these other ones, there was already holes here in the fender, and so I just put a nut on the back side here. Got both brackets installed, and now we'll just need to put the AC compressor in and make sure everything works well. You know, basically as low profile as it can possibly be so that we can clear the hood with all the fittings and everything. The fittings will come up like this, so we should clear the hood just fine. So we've got AC hoses out of the Toyota. I got the AC fittings that I want to put on. This kit here to crimp the new ones on. I'm gonna try this out. Goes nothing. There we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect length. Oh, all right. Well. <laughs> oh, man. Might as well crimp this one on. Got our handy dandy tool here. Start pumping it. Still lined up well. Looking at the deformation. Okay, well, I'm pretty happy with that. We are done. That's mounted, lines are in, everything's connected, looks good. I'm really happy with it. We're gonna press forward, everything's in and, and clears and in really good locations. So, really happy with it. We've got things in place, ready to test AC. So we uh, just refilled the AC. The main thing we're looking for is just the pump to come on. We'll look at some of the circuits and things, make sure everything's functioning normally. Nothing's hot, no blown fuses. For this truck, the AC is just a button on the dash. That's how it was from kind of the factory and that's what we're sticking with. That's, we've got a light there. That is so awesome. It's like very vintage. It looks like it matches exactly. Boom. That's awesome. I like it. Plan is you're going to go up there, turn the car on, and then push the AC button. We're going to go in there. I'm going to use my awesome thumbprint to turn on the car. And then we're going to press the AC button and we should have the AC compressor kick on. All so. right. You think it will? It'll kick on. Okay, so this is positive negative contactor and DC to DC. You ready for AC contactor? Okay. Yeah. I heard a click. I don't hear the pump though. I hear a click. Okay, so we need to turn on the command wire. So the pump we have, the diagram is, I guess we're guessing. I shouldn't say guessing. What are we saying? What are we doing? It's not guessing, it's a little... Ambiguous, how about that? It's ambiguous. So we, we did it what we thought was a way. Uh, turns out we might need one more wire. We're just listening for the pump sound. So we've rewired, what did we do, Tony? This compressor is a little weird. Instead of having a positive trigger to turn on the compressor, it wants a ground, bring it to ground to trigger it, so. So a little wiring change, we're trying, we're going for number two, attempt number two. 
Maybe it's the world's quietest AC compressor. It's like a million percent efficient. Can't even hear it. So we've been working on this AC for a little while. We've had Tony and Russ and other people. Got John looking at it now with a fresh set of eyes and he's got it working. So John, tell us what happened. On the connector, on the mating connector that plugs into the AC compressor, it's labeled one through six. There's no other label on the AC compressor itself that has those numberings. So you have to go off of the uh, sheet, the diagram that they give you, and it's backwards. It's one through six from left to right, and the mating connector is one through six right to left. So that makes it really confusing. I read through it, made sure, you know, it says follow everything that it says on the actual drawing. I switched the pins around. We're gonna have a 0% on the PWM pin because it's just not hooked up. The lowest RPM. Yeah, is what it was 2000 RPM. And then you just have to ground this pin. So. There it goes. It's uh, ramping up. That is really ramping up. I'm gonna go ahead and just stop. <laughs> yeah, super exciting. Oh my gosh. All right, the team is trying to fine tune the new AC system. Got Russ over here checking out the high and low side pressures. All right, so our suction side, if I shut the valve, we're still pretty low. So I'm just trying to add it slowly enough. And we really want to see this gauge come up to a bit higher, but the more we add on the low side, we are getting a little cooler temperature. So I think we might've just been a hair low. Mm -hmm. And then that fan, when you shut that fan off, that thing heat soaks on the front, both pressures just crank high and then you lose all, and the, the AC compressor just keeps going. But it doesn't so you're talking about the, fran the fan um, on the on condenser. The condenser yeah. It's not cooling that condenser it'll at go, all. It'll go 150 degrees. The fan will kick on for two seconds, drops to 110. Ooh. It's quick. All right, John, do you want to tell them Tell the camera what you're looking at. Just looking at the highest, te well, ambient temperature versus temperature coming out of the vents for our AC. We're getting, it's like about 12 degrees Fahrenheit temperature drop from ambient to AC air. Okay, so 12 degrees, that's not nothing, but we're looking for better. What's going on here? So what we're testing right now, you can hear the fan come on and off. So we have a, a trinary switch and it's in the AC high pressure line and if the pressure goes too high or if it's too low or if it's just right it'll decide if it gets the sorry temperature and pressure it will command on the ac or the fan in this case it's the fan that's doing a lot of the work right now so as you see here when you turn the fan on the pressure drops we get a little bit of thermal loading on the front cooling pack and you'll see the pressure come back up you see it come back up and right around not quite at 300 it'll kick the fan on Right about there, it should come on. You hear it click, and then immediately you start to see it climb, you know, go back down. So our cooling pack is pretty efficient. It comes down, it drops the pressure instantly. You know, your fan comes on. Yeah, so that basically maintains a nice, cool Correct, right. temperature the whole time. It won't let it thermal load too hot or too cold is the idea. But so as you're driving down the road, you might not hear the fan come on at all. Yep. A little bit of airflow, and that's all you'll need, yeah. Okay. That's so good. that's a good test. All right, so we've determined that the heater works. We're trying to make sure it works as intended. So it's getting high voltage, it's heating things up. We also need to make sure it can turn off. So it's got two wires and when it reaches a certain temperature, those wires should give a signal that we can use to turn the system off. And so we've got it wired, we think, but wanna take it slow, make sure we're not damaging the heater or anything else. We found our thermal temperature wires and we are hooking them up. The circuit should go up to 150 C, that's about 300 Fahrenheit before it opens the circuit. So that is very, very hot, but we wanna make sure everything works and is safe before we call it good. Okay, we are in the Toyota. Again, dash and things are kind of in pieces, but we're just gonna show you how this works. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the car. So there's the blower going. Oh no, we don't have AC on. Currently, it's, this is just vent. That's what it is. So we've got it to cool. That means the heater's not on. All right, so we're gonna go for AC. We should be able to hear the compressor and the fan. There it goes. I can, I can feel a little rumble. I can hear it. All right, so we'll show you on the thermal camera here. Yeah, it's starting to get pretty cold. <laughs> All right, so just showing you the thermal camera here. So you can see like it's 19C kind of in the center of the dash. And then up here, it's like 11C. And again, this is just after a few seconds. So you can see like the air box down there. Yeah, that's getting pretty cool. 
10C, 9C. So yeah, it's working pretty well. All right, so now that we've uh, shown you the AC, see nice and cool, we'll go ahead and kick off the AC. And I heard the compressor go off. And this time we're gonna kick on the heat. Okay, there's the heat. So again, we'll show you the thermal camera so you can see what's going on. So again, it was down at like uh, 8C. So yeah, you can see it's already heating up. It's like 35C, 36C. So again, that's very, very quick. Get some nice heat through things. And again, you see down the air box, it's heating up. Oh yeah, it's feeling great. 33C. So again, in just a matter of a few seconds, yeah, it's uh, very, very warm. So that's looking great. 39C over there. So yeah, this is a cozy little cab. The heat and AC work very quickly, very well. So. Um, I'm really pleased. I, I think the customer's gonna like it quite a bit. So I know so many people will say, um, hey, you should do heat pump. Um, it's much more efficient. Um, I agree. We'll probably do that in another episode. This one, uh, the heater element worked really well for this application. Again, it's a small cab. So, uh, but yeah, maybe we'll try that for another one. All right, well, we got the AC system to work. We even got the heater system to work. We're getting cold temperature out. We've uh -huh. tuned with pressure. Yeah, so basically uh, we're hoping the customer will be very pleased. It's a small cab. It should uh, be climate controlled very easily. So that'll do it for this time. See you next time.